Uh, well, my name is Justin Goldman. I'm the founder and owner of a company called the Goalie Guild, uh, which is based in Colorado, United States. And uh, my background in hockey is very, very untraditional. Um, I grew up on a horse ranch in the middle of nowhere, Texas, about an hour and a half outside of Dallas. And uh, this was in the you know mid '80s, early '90s, and hockey was uh, not even a blip on the map back then. And uh, growing up on a horse ranch, I was always outside and developed some good athletic skills, uh, you know, playing basketball and riding horses. And um, when I was 12 years old, my family and I moved to the city of Dallas, a suburb um, called Addison. And it was the same year that the Minnesota North Stars had relocated to Dallas. So the team moved to Dallas. Uh, hockey was a brand new sport. And uh, me and all my uh, school buddies went to the very first Dallas Stars practice. And of course, the first two goalies, or the first two guys on the ice were goaltenders, uh, Andy Moog and Darcy Wakaluk. And uh, I fell in love with the position right then and there. I knew it was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And um, back then, there were no goalie coaches. There were very few hockey teams in the high school league. And so I really had to take it upon myself to learn how to play, you know, just by watching goalies on TV. Um, and back then, it was such a new, fresh sport. It was really, really exciting for me and all my friends. So. Um, we, you know, we were part of a very new grassroots uh, side of hockey in Texas and um, although I wish I had the uh, coaching and the opportunities to, you know, play at a high level and train at a high level, it was really cool now that I'm looking back, you know, 15 years in the past, it was really cool to be a part of uh, the very beginning of hockey in Texas. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty average skilled goaltender but had the passion for it and always felt like I had a really good eye. <laughs> um, for scouting and evaluating goalies. So um, I kind of, uh, you know, moved to Colorado when I was 18 and attended Colorado State University and got my degree in uh, technical journalism and broadcasting and did a lot of writing and uh, basically just put my two passions together, writing and goaltending, and uh, got involved with professional hockey at the minor league level shortly after college. Uh, did some goalie coaching in Denver and uh, slowly developed this uh, this ability to uh, you know scout goaltenders and evaluate them and um, help average hockey fans or the casual hockey fan understand uh, some of the complexities of goaltending and so that kind of uh, worked its way into what uh, the goalie guild the goalie guild is now today which is basically like a independent scouting service for goalies and, and a consulting service as well so that's, uh, uh, that's... How did you come into contact with Tomas? Um, you know, it's really funny. I, I hadn't really been too familiar with Tomas um, or much about goaltending in Sweden and Finland. And maybe I think uh, two and a half years ago, um, I started to uh, read some articles about how Swedish goaltenders were really starting to, uh, you know, make, uh, make some very big strides with uh, playing in North America and having success in North America. So I became really curious about uh, the differences between the goaltending styles in uh, North America and uh, Sweden and Finland. And obviously it didn't take long for Tomas's name to pop up and you know you start to learn about uh, his career and what he's done for Swedish goaltending and uh, you know he's the godfather of goaltending in this country so um, obviously I wanted to learn more about him and reach out to him and um, you know it was uh, last summer in Madison, Wisconsin of all places where we finally, our paths finally crossed. And uh, it was a great honor just to get the chance to meet him. I had no idea he was going to be so um, receptive and so open to sharing a lot of information and a lot of things that he had learned over the course of his amazing career about uh, you know evaluating goalies, coaching goalies, you know goaltending culture in different countries. So um, his openness and his uh, ability to share and his willingness to share was just, uh, something I was not used to ever seeing before. And it was really remarkable and uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity to have the chance to interview him in, in my newest book and get a chance to spend some time with him, not only on the ice um, at the NHL goalie camp last summer in Madison, but here, uh, right here in his house. So I think that alone, just uh, getting to spend a few days, you know, here with his family, um, in his house is, says a lot about his openness and his willingness to share and the friendship that we're developing is very, very meaningful to me. What have you heard about Sweden Hockey Institute? 
Um, I know that Thomas has put a lot of work into into building this up and it's had a lot of success with the players that have come through the program and I was hoping to get a chance to stop by the office and meet you before we before we head over to Finland but uh, you know it, it's great I think um, what you guys are doing with the social media outreach is really important and really great because um, not a lot of guys in North America get a chance to see um, what the Swedish Hockey Institute is all about and what you guys are trying to accomplish there with player development in the camps. So um, <clears throat> I think it's I think it's awesome. You know, I, I, there's still so much I have to learn about uh, Swedish hockey, which is why I'm planning a trip to come back next summer. Um, but uh, you know, at least from the goaltending perspective, um, North Americans have learned really quickly over the last couple of years just how solid the goaltending is and the structure that uh, that the the institute has and, and Swedish hockey as a whole has with the goalie coaching and the goalie development. And uh, that's really what separates uh, this country from, from the North American countries. And again, it goes back to uh, the, the culture that Thomas has developed within the Institute with what you guys are doing, uh, the sharing and the spreading of uh, the drills on social media and just showing the world what you guys are doing, I think really means a lot for not only um, what you guys are accomplishing, but for the whole world of hockey and the whole world of goaltending and the ability to share and that openness to share is uh, is what helps the entire position evolve and get better. And so that that right there, I think is is great. You know, it's it, it's obviously not easy. There's a eight or nine hour time change, so I see some of your guys' stuff in the middle of the night. But um, anything that you guys can do to to share that information and showcase you know, what you guys are accomplishing and the players that you bring through the program um, is really, really important to the future of hockey as as the sport continues to get faster and the guys become more skilled and the goaltenders have to find ways to continue to improve and get better and be more efficient with their skating and all the different skills. So that, uh, that to me, I think is what uh, is so great about what you guys are doing. And, um, you know, it always comes back to that same concept of sharing and, you know, in North America, it's uh, sharing is not as prevalent as it is here, and so you know, you guys really break down those barriers. And you know, the more North Americans and the more uh, Americans that see what you guys are doing, get to know Thomas's story a little bit, see some of the goalies coming through the system, um, that that helps the barriers break down a little bit in North America. And that's uh, probably the single most important step that we can take as Americans and North Americans. Um, to uh, to continue to evolve the position and get better at goaltending. So that's uh, that's why I'm a pretty big fan of you guys. But like I said, I still have a lot to learn, and that's why making these trips for me is really important and uh, really grateful for that opportunity. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioning the the culture, North America versus Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the next step? What do you think is the the next big thing in in uh, <coughs> in coaching goaltenders or hockey players? You know, I think it's hard for me to speak on hockey players just because I'm so goalie oriented. But for goalies, I think, um, honestly, you know, I think it's doing what I'm doing here, like taking the time to actually come over and be a part of what's happening here, you know, and basically diving right into the culture of Sweden and Swedish goaltending and Swedish hockey, you know, and it's it's uh, you don't know what you're missing out on until you actually come over here and see it firsthand. And I was fortunate enough to do that last year in Finland. And now my goal is to do that here in Sweden over the next couple of years. And um, basically taking what I learn and sharing that information with everyone um, that I interact with in North America is is the next step. Right. And, and trying to bridge the gap between the two worlds. And um, sure enough, that was the title of my newest book, Between Two Worlds, because there there are so many cultural and environmental differences between the ways between the way goalies develop in North America and the way goalies develop over here. And there's a really wide gap. It's it's very very different. But um, you can't really understand those differences unless you actually spend time over here. And so that's kind of my goal is to spend the time over here, um, learn from guys like Tomas, experience what it's like to watch. Swedish goalies trained to watch 
goalies develop in their native homeland and then bring some of that information back over to, to North America and share that with the coaches and, and help them understand you know, that there is a really big difference in the culture and the environments here and the training methods um, and, and then also help them to kind of bridge that gap and get them to maybe incorporate some of the, some of the um, uh, techniques or the tactics or the ways in which goalies train over here and in Finland. To North America and so I think that's really important because it, again it's the more information you have the the more ability you have to develop goalies properly and um, <clears throat> no one wants to have a narrow-minded approach but if you don't experience what life is like on the other side of the ocean it's really hard to understand um, how there are very many different ways to, to stop the puck and different ways to develop goalies so that, uh, that learning process for me, it's not so much about what I know, but it's a lot about what I don't know. And coming here, I realize how much I don't know. And so I'm always learning and always trying to take the, what I learn and share it um, with the people who don't have the opportunities to travel over here. Yeah, great. Uh, what's, what's the next step with network goaltending? You going to Viramaki tomorrow? Yeah, we head to Viramaki uh, today actually, and yeah. the camp starts uh, Sunday. We'll pick up some of the goalies. and. This is a really exciting opportunity, you know, I, um, my hands are full with all the different things I'm doing with the Goalie Guild, but there was no way I was going to pass up this opportunity um, to work with Tomas Magnusson. Um, the other founding coaches are Mike Valley, who is of Swedish descent, um, played for AIK for a year, and uh, the goalie coach for the, uh, for the Dallas Stars, or director of goalie development for the Dallas Stars. David Alexander, who is uh, the assistant goalie coach with the Tampa Bay Lightning, and then uh, Hanu Nyquist, who uh, was with the Finnish Hockey Federation, now with Red Bull. Um, and these four coaches came together last summer uh, in Madison and had never worked together before. And uh, the chemistry and the camaraderie that they were able to create in a very short amount of time um, and their intelligence level when it comes to developing goalies and coaching goalies was like anything I had never, I'd never seen anything like that before. So that was very eye-opening and very special opportunity and um, to have these guys from these different cultural backgrounds and you know a Swedish goalie coach, a Finnish goalie coach and a couple of North Americans was really really unique and I think uh, the goalies, the NHL goalies that were at this camp in Madison um, really thrived from that experience and I know I learned more in five days than I'd probably had learned two or three years prior to that. So um, for all of us to kind of sit down and say, hey, look, we have something really special here. There's, there's no egos involved. Everyone just wants to learn from each other. Um, we had to find a way to work together over the next couple of years and find ways to continue working together. And that's where network goaltending came about. It was actually uh, Tomas who came up with the the name we were sitting around trying to come up with a name for it and Tomas uh, he's got uh, all the wisdom in the world so for him to come up with network which is kind of a play on words a little bit was was awesome and um, it kind of uh, took off on its own really quickly he built the website a couple months later and um, we were fortunate to get the opportunity to train at the Veramaki which is where the Finnish Olympic program trains and um, you know to have the same coaching staff there and 12 you know really good goalie prospects um, coming out uh, to Finland for a week of training is going to be really, really exciting. And um, I know for a fact something new will come out of it, whether it's a new tactic or a new way to explain, you know, a different type of, uh, of uh, save selection. You know, just the, the knowledge and the, um, the camaraderie and the chemistry between the coaching staff. I know something good's going to come out of it, so that's probably the most exciting part for me, and I'm I'm very grateful and uh, honored to just be a part of that part of this group. Yeah. So, what's the idea with the website? Is it still going to be all free? <clears throat> yeah, I think so. I, you know, like uh, again, our, one of our main tenets and main pillars for this website is just sharing information, um, and you know, sharing information not only makes other goalie coaches um, that don't have these opportunities better, but it makes us better as well. And um, you know that's always been a, a big philosophy of mine, which is why you know all the stuff you see on the Goalie Guild, except for buying the books, obviously, is available for anyone. Um, and I'm available if anyone ever wants to pick my brain about goaltending. I can talk about it all day long. So um, I think yeah, the website will remain free, and we have uh, what's called Net Talks videos, and these are just short, you know, a couple minute videos um, on different aspects of goaltending that uh, we just want to share with. You know the rest of the goaltending community and uh, our coaching symposium which is in Madison at the end of August 
um, is a really great opportunity for goalie coaches from all over the world. So these goalie coaches can come in for a weekend, sit down and listen to some really good presentations and, you know, partake in some uh, really good um, discussions with the other goalies that are in attendance and, you know, just really try and co come up with some, solu some solutions for some problems that we have as goaltenders, whether it's trying to find more ways to be efficient or how do we develop goalies better at the younger ages. Um, there's so many obstacles and it's so difficult to, to develop goalies into pro athletes because um, the position is so complex and it's so difficult that uh, we're always looking for solutions and ways to, to make the position better and make goalies better. So I think definitely the site will remain free. Um, the the symposium is only a couple hundred dollars to attend, but it's a great uh, learning opportunity and a great, you know, networking opportunity to, to meet a lot of coaches from a lot of different areas uh, in North America and Europe. Yeah, great. So now you met uh, Tomas, who's Swedish. Have mm -hmm. you met any other Swedish? I haven't, but I'm, I'm, I'm really excited actually uh, in the next couple of days I'll be meeting uh, Willy Rahm from HV71 and then uh, Mike Vernblom. Yep. And uh, that's that's going to be really exciting for me. I mean, I've followed these guys on, on Twitter for at least two years now. and. Um, I know some of the accolades that they have and some of the accomplishments that they've had coaching Swedish goaltenders. Um, and uh, again, it's very few people in North America get that opportunity to kind of uh, learn from goalie coaches in other countries. So any chance I get to meet uh, a Swedish or a Finnish goalie coach or anyone in Europe, it's, it's a great opportunity for me. I just want to absorb as much information as I can and again, learn about uh, the differences, whether it's uh, the terminology like the words that we use to explain what goalies are doing or their methodologies um, or you know how they break down video. I mean, there's so much you can learn um, from just having a couple of discussions or just being around some of these professional and very elite goalie coaches in a few days. So um, just try and be a sponge and learn as much as I can. But yeah, I'm really excited to meet those two guys. And uh, there's, there's a couple of Swedish goalies that will be at the camp. Um, Johan Blomqvist is one of them. And uh, you know, again, you can learn from goalie coaches and you can also learn from goalies. So it'll be really exciting to see kind of his style and how it matches up to some of the North American goalies that will be at this camp. And comparing and contrasting those styles is probably my favorite part of, of what I do. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah.